will note in FX3 that we're going to cover off. Some of them will be visually um, covered off and other ones uh, I'll, I'm just simply going to walk through and talk about uh, here this morning. So again, uh, if you do have questions, uh, please email support at visual, or sorry, uh, sales at visualstatement.com and we will gladly uh, get back to you just with the number of people in attendance. Uh, this was the easiest approach to make sure that your individual questions can be answered. So covering off today, uh, custom sign editor uh, now includes cropping of imported images. So I'll walk through that custom sign uh, system. We'll give a couple of examples of how to use that. Um, so a little bit of overview of that feature that we added uh, a few releases ago. And we will go through that. Uh, so custom sign editor, you can now build custom signs using the images and edit them uh, to look just right. So in other words, cropping them down to just show the image that you need to. Um, also, I'll just cover off in the custom sign editor, the auto speed sign, which is a very easy uh, way to create a, a custom speed sign. Imp improved DSF import and export. Um, this is not something that I'll walk through here today. If you do import DXFs, you will simply see some enhancements to it as you step through that import process. So expanded range of DXX entity objects. So uh, when importing DXFs now, uh, the range of lines, ellipses, circles, etc., cetera, um, have been expanded to allow those to import more appropriately. Uh, DXF import now allows you to select which entity types you want to import. For example, you will now get a checkbox allowing you to uh, you know, bring in the entities, whether it's a line, ellipses, circles, and you can choose uh, whether or not you want the text to come in, for instance, uh, versus the lines. So a little more uh, flexibility there when importing. Uh, auto centering, uh, there has been issues in the past where you, some people brought in a DXF and can't seem to find it in the drawable area. Uh, now uh, the program will automatically detect that it's outside the drawable, drawable area and bring it to center within your scene. Uh, <clears throat> the other enhancement, which is a little bit uh, behind the scenes in the coding side of things, is creation uh, movie extensions. Now, now is automatically um, going to use less memory when doing that. And improvements to both Google and Bing Map functionality, again, not something I can really show. Uh, but there were some issues. Uh, Microsoft had actually put out an update, uh, failed to notify. Um, not something Microsoft no normally do, but uh, anyhow, we did not. Uh, we then ran into some challenges when importing the Bing Maps. Um, it was causing some uh, issues for some people, some users. So that has been addressed. Uh, updated the coding there to be able to handle that appropriately. And in some areas, uh, Google Maps was actually dropping in uh, automatically to a 45 degree angle when importing. Uh, rather than the straight top-down view, uh, and that has been resolved as well with the coding. So my screen, I'm just going to switch over, and you will now see the FX3 application uh, on screen. And uh, again, as we're going to walk through here, uh, Gerald had mentioned approximately 30 minutes. That's probably uh, more than enough time for us to walk through here today. Uh, to kind of cover off the FX3 uh, you know, cut using the custom sign object within here. So um, within the sign library now, so again, if we go down to the sign library, which is already highlighted on my screen, uh, you will now see the options here. Your regular signs are all on the list, but the two top ones now, custom sign and a speed limit sign. Um, I'm actually just going to open up a, a quick roadway scene here just to give us something to draw on top of. So I've just got a uh, roadway with an overpass. If we go into 3D, we can actually see that uh, as an overpass going on over top. And I did that on purpose as I'm going to go in and put a highway uh, interstate roadway uh, exit sign on there uh, just to give you an example there. So uh, very easy to start with here. If I just drop on the speed limit sign, that's the first one I'll start with. You click on that speed limit sign. It just simply now asks you to enter a speed. So 75 miles per hour, hit OK, and you've now automatically created a speed limit sign with 75 miles per hour labeled on it. So nothing more to that than 
uh, than what you see there. Very, very simple. Uh, down on the bottom, of course, you have the uh, edit options there now to be able to go in and you know change your sign size, uh, the height of the sign, so I can go in here and change it to seven feet. So obviously that's when we're going into the 3D view, if you want it to be a specific height, you can do that. Obviously, you can also just grab the grips to change the size of your sign or manually type in the size of your sign face that you would like. Um, so that one's fairly simple. Uh, not much to that one. We're going to spend the majority of the time here um, on the actual custom sign system within the program now. So if I click on the custom sign system, it actually brings up a uh, editor window now that we can go in and edit the edit the sign uh, using images uh, you know that we may have taken out on the scene uh, you know or if you're you know, able to Google a sign or something like that any any specific sign that you want to build uh, you now have that capability so we can come in up, up top here we can name the sign whatever we want label that so we can save it um, and it gives you different options so circles uh, diamonds so if you've taken a picture it will fall within here and you can now edit it down to the proper size to fill your entire sign uh, I'm going to go down to the rectangle rounded, and I'm going to go, I'll just leave it at uh, this size here for now. So there's our area there. I'm going to hit open image, and we can now go search for the actual sign that we want to build, or the, sorry, the image that we want to build onto our sign. So I'm going to go in here, and I just have some sample signs. And I'm going to go in here and just do a, um, I just found a, a while ago just a, a sign that I'll use. So if I hit open, so find the image that we want. This is a picture that was taken. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have some, you know, uh, grass area in behind it uh, and whatnot. And I want to get rid of that. And this is the, the main new functionality that allows you now to edit this image uh, in several different ways to get what you want and, and need it to look like. So on the right hand side here now we have an edit image button. And what you can see is it now allows me to use all these different functionalities up top here to make this look uh, as good as I can uh, coming into here. So again, what I mean by that is if you've had if you take your pic your picture of the sign on an angle or something, you may want to change uh, you know change the way it looks to, to look more straight on. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just click with my mouse here in order to crop it. I'm just going to drag right over top of my actual sign that I want to be labeled as a sign. Once I have that done, I'm going to hit the crop tool up top here, and it's now just cropped our image or, or a photo there to just show whatever I've cropped in that area. So now I'm simply looking at the actual image of the sign, and that's what I want to use. And I can also go into here and change the aspect, aspect ratios. Uh, as I need or want here as well. So I'm quite satisfied with that. I'm going to hit OK. And we now have dropped that image onto that specific sign, which I have a rectangle sign and the width. And I can change this now. Uh, maybe it's actually a, maybe it's actually 4 by 3, the other direction. And you can see it automatically updates our sign now. So obviously if you have the proper dimensions, type those in. Um, you know, you may, you may not always be able to go get the proper dimension of a sign, but you may be able to take an educated guess to make it look appropriate. So once I have that completed, I can actually save this as a template. So if I save that as a template, it actually saves to my custom template library as a custom sign. Uh, again, I would have labeled that differently as now it just came in as a custom sign. But um, once I've done that, I hit OK. And it's now dropped it under our scene. I'll just pull it down here. There's our custom sign coming into the proper dimensions uh, that we specified. So down at the bottom now you can see the dimensions for that sign as per the custom sign builder. Now, again, we have the capability or option, I guess, uh, of changing the sign height. I'll leave this one at 9 feet. This one's at 7 feet. Um, and, you know, away we go. If I hit the 3D button here now, let me just grab a vehicle to put on the scene here. And just to give you an idea of uh, what this looks like, I'll hit the 3D option here as well. 
And we'll just take a second to jump into the 3D view of this to see what the signs actually look like in a 3D environment here as well. So we now have our minivan driving down the road. We have a speed limit sign of 75, and we have that other sign that we created as well, posted on the sign pole as specified in the custom sign builder there. Uh, the one other sign that I thought I would do is, I'm just going to close out of 3D, is, I don't know if you noticed in the 3D view there, but I had created a overpass, um, and maybe you want to put an overpass exit sign on there, something like that as well. So we'll go in, and I'll just do one more to show you kind of editing that, raising it up, etc., to put it in place uh, on the scene. So again, go to the sign library custom signs and again we now have the option of changing this to look like the proper shape etc that we wanted so I'm going to go in here and make this quite large so we now have a uh, large sign area to build I'm going to go open image again and I'm going to go find that image of that particular roadway exit sign that I need or want So I have a sample overhead sign uh, that I'll use. And obviously an overhead sign might need a little bit more tweaking because you're likely not going to be at eye level being able to hit it straight on. So it might mean uh, you know, tweaking the aspect ratio to make it look, uh, again, as good as possible. So I'll hit open. And you can see we have this basically exit sign showing up there uh, for an upcoming exit along here. Now again, edit image on the right hand side. And it now brings up the editor where I can now drag with my mouse over top of the area that I actually want to be part of my sign. Once I have that done, hit the crop tool on the top. And there's the actual image that will now be utilized for that custom exit sign. Hit OK. And I've now just created that custom sign on top. And I can certainly tweak the size of it to, to match what I need or want. Again, I can save this as a template, so um, up top here, it may not be a great template sign in this case, but exit sign, save as a template, and now it's in my custom libraries. I can hit OK, and it will actually drop that right into our program now, or into the diagram, sorry, ready to be used. And a couple of things I'm going to change here now. I'm going to go in here and change my pole height. I want it to be zero because I actually don't want a pole. And I'm going to go into here and raise this up to, um, I think that overpass was 18 feet. I'll try 18 feet here. Put it in place. And again, I've now created that. So in the 2D, uh, 2D scene, we can see there's an exit sign. Uh, so again, obviously in some situations, exit signs come into play. And in this case here, uh, we have that one in the 2D view showing up there now. If I hit the 3D button, we'll simply jump into the 3D side of things and be able to view that sign now up on, mounted on the overpass. And I obviously have it in the wrong position. There we go. I failed to put my Z value height in there. And we can now see our exit sign mounted hanging on the overpass. And again, in the 3D world, um, I may want to go tweak this and raise that up. I put it at 15 feet. I'm going to just actually close out of there and just simply edit the height to something more appropriate, uh, maybe 19 feet.
And there we now have our sign mounted on that overpass. And again, if I'm taking a screenshot, if I'm doing an animation, uh, we can simply see all these signs being part of our actual scene creation here now. And there's the Ohio Turnpike exit sign showing up on there. So any, any sign, uh, the main purpose of, of the sign editor, uh, again, was feedback from customers wanting to be able to create custom signs, um, unique signs, that type of thing. Uh, using images was a, you know, uh, it gives you guys a great opportunity to have the exact uh, sign placed in your scene uh, as needed. And a little added bonus, we added in that custom speed sign to make it very easy to go in and create the look uh, of a speed sign that you need just by adding the, simply adding the numbers. That is, uh, that really does cover off the main updates. Some of the main updates um, on the FX3 FB10 uh, release were more in behind the scenes, uh, streamlining the, the images, etc. And allowing you to obviously create those custom signs. Appreciate you guys attending here today. Uh, as mentioned by Gerilyn and myself, if anybody has any questions, please contact sales at visualstatement.com and we'd be happy to put you in touch with your rep to discuss uh, Feature Pack 10 in more detail. Uh, again, just with the number of people on the uh, view here today, it, uh, fielding questions right now uh, would be more difficult. Again, thank you for your time and uh, look forward to FP11 release where we'll again do the same type of uh, presentation showing the new features and functions uh, within the Visual Statement software. And one thing I'll mention as well for anybody that's interested, we will be doing um, a release webinar for Edge FX 6.3, I believe is the release number, um, and that'll be happening at 10 a.m. Pacific time on July 25th. So feel free to join us then as well, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks.